Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for stopping by. So uh, today uh, we are going to talk about a very interesting topic, uh, which is uh, telemetry-based uh, load balancing. Uh, you probably heard a similar topic in other sessions, but uh, this is what we are doing, going to talk about is not only a theoretical idea, but a practical deployment scenario, which is from Tencent network, uh, which is a hyperscale network, which uh, you guys are familiar with. Uh, today, um, actually, uh, Tencent person, Zach Tang, was supposed to join us in person. He could not join. So, but uh, the, the material, the message, everything is directly from Tencent. Um, and um, my name is Bhaskar Chini. I'm a product manager at uh, Broadcom. Um, and uh, my colleague, Surendra, uh, will help me with uh, some of the slides, um, especially focused on the uh, Tencent uh, deployment scenario. Uh, Surendra is a distinguished engineer from Broadcom. So first, we'll start with uh, what is the connection with uh, OCP, right? Uh, so as you know, uh, switch abstract, in uh, abstract interface, SI, uh, is uh, getting uh, widely deployed. And uh, Broadcom is a significant uh, has made significant contributions, including uh, telemetry. So the specification that we are working with the partners and community to drive this is called telemetry and monitoring TAM specification, and that has support for the in-band telemetry technology and uh, you know drop monitoring and many other features that uh, are going to play a significant role in uh, not only monitoring the network but optimizing the network, especially when it comes to uh, AI ML workloads, uh, which uh, we are going to cover in a few minutes. Yeah, I picked it up from here. It's like, okay, many of you would have seen this. It's like basically the cluster size are going up. The As you put more number of GPUs, there's more amount of workload, uh, the network bandwidth demand that comes up. So if you look at the number of GPUs, they are going into thousands or tens of thousands, and in some cases, actually 100,000. As you increase this one, the amount of bandwidth goes up, so your fabric uh, bandwidth is very important, the link relation is very important. But what we find is that as you increase the number of GPUs beyond, let's say, a few hundred to a few thousand, the computational power of the cluster does not linearly go up. Right? So yeah, of course, uh, you have the so many of uh, teraflops of uh, compute available, but I think m many times it's because of the network. It's caused by the network. You don't have enough network bandwidth, or it's not being uh, used fully. Even if you have 400 gig links or 800 gig links, the, you, will, you will find that as, uh, because of various reasons I'll come to later, the, the utilization is not very high, and then uh, you, the CPUs, the GPUs will be waiting. And uh, last. Was OCP session, you would have seen from some other uh, hyperscalers that it can be as much as 50% of the JCT in the worst case for certain types of workloads. The other one that we want to uh, show here, showcase here is that the impact of the packet loss. So when you have such very, very large clusters with, say, maybe 50,000 or 100,000 or 200,000 uh, GPUs connected together, there is failures, and then even if you lose 0.1% of the RDMA packets, there's a significant loss in the computational power loss during that period, just just because it depends on how you're handling it. Like even a small fraction of packet loss has huge impact on the uh, on the performance. So here I'm showing uh, the challenges that are being faced. So there is nickel 2.3, which has the links for the all use. And then there's a 2.4 has trees, which is much, much better, actually. As you can see, even when you go up to uh, uh, 24,000 GPUs, it shows that it somewhat st stays up. The, nickel, the bandwidth st st stays pretty high, but still there's like a 35% drop from the ideally what you would like to see. Right? So, and they, there are two primary reasons. Like, just put aside the failure case, right? Like, even if you put aside the failure case, there are two reasons why this is happening. One is the load imbalancing. That right? is like you have large flows, you have elephant flows that you would have heard many times, and these flows, they are not being balanced uh, correctly, so it causes the congestion. So the so one of them is the uh, uh, load uh, imbalance that, that happens. And the second one is the congestion. So you could have situations where you uh, the two of them going to one, like let's say you have all to all, or even, even all the just cases. There are many times, many points, it, it happens that there's a congestion. 
and many times the congestion could actually slow, uh, send the slow, uh, slow down the sender more than what is necessary. So if you have significant congestion, instead of actually keeping the line full, you are actually going slower than what it would go with the less amount of traffic that's coming in. So you need a congestion control mechanism that is actually adaptive to the, tra adaptive to the demands that are coming from the network, and that's the second reason. So we'll go over like actually how we plan to solve these two, or how Tencent solve these two issues uh, with uh, HPCC and IFA. Yeah, so um, we discussed the challenges uh, in that uh, network, right? Uh, well, partly because when when you have these uh, RDMA, right, like uh, RDMA or Rocky workloads, it expects a lossless uh, fabric. Ethernet being, uh, you know, um, a lossy uh, fabric, you need some additional mechanisms to address uh, the expectations of the application, which is uh, rocky in this case. So here, um, IFA is basically in-band flow analyzer, which is Broadcom's in-band telemetry implementation. Right. So what IFA does, uh, instead of um, you know centralized collector gathering telemetry on a periodic basis, you can think of SNMP and technologies like that. The telemetry data, like when did the packet arrive, when did the packet leave, uh, you know, what's the ingress port, egress port, and what is the queue depth at that time, all this uh, data is captured within the user packet and uh, sent uh, in, a, uh, in the data plane itself without involvement from the control plane. So if you see this diagram, it is explaining how the packet, uh, you know, uh, sent by the probe packet sent by the uh, sending server goes through the uh, network hubs collects the uh, key statistics in band in an augmented man in a accumulative manner and then uh, the uh, receiving server destination server will receive the metrics from each hop it travels through um, in one report right the send the destination server will send that back to the originating server the originating server will know which queue is most uh, or, or what is the queue depth if it is building up then it can uh, you know um, uh, slow it down or if it is uh, uh, freeing up it can increase the flow so this is very similar to hpcc but that is just one way of leveraging the in-band telemetry mechanism. But there are several algorithms, like uh, Surendra is going to explain, for Tencent. And as I said, uh, it is deployed by last year in this stage. Um, I co-presented with uh, uh, Alibaba, uh, where they deployed HPCC with this mechanism. Uh, and similarly, um, um, we are presenting today about uh, um, Tencent hyperscale. So these are not small networks. These are hyperscale networks, large number of flows, and uh, very mission-critical data being managed by um, IFA. And that means it is like uh, not that we are there waiting for uh, you know, some new fancy technology to arrive, but they are leveraging the Ethernet technology today with the existing uh, mechanisms such as IFA to optimize the network and uh, leverage the, uh, you know, the benefits of what we have. The other mechanism is the packet drop monitoring. We know uh, packet drops cannot be avoided, uh, right, um, especially in IP networks, but uh, a lot of the times what happens is when a packet gets dropped, the NOS or the centralized collector doesn't even know about it because they, they don't know uh, that the packet got dropped. And, you know, we, I presented again uh, last year with Alibaba. Uh, you know, they say silent drops, right? Uh, so when these packet drops uh, are experienced, obviously when you are expecting a lossless fa fabric, then uh, they cause a lot, um, uh, lot of difficulties to the application. It's not just uh, Rocky, but even other applications also. If you have uh, packet drops and you don't know about it, then that will uh, impact the application performance, right? Like say, one customer mentioned, um, you know, uh, let's say, think of an e-commerce platform, right? A customer is trying to place an order and uh, the packets are getting dropped and then he will just leave to another website, right? So you lose the customer. So it can be a significant impact to the business. And that is where packet drop monitoring becomes very important. And the second question is, we are talking about hyperscale networks. Monitoring at scale, right? Not just monitoring, but monitoring at scale is very important. And that is where uh, we are adding value through 
stateless uh, and stateful, both mechanisms are supported for packet drop monitoring. By implementing the stateful packet drop monitoring, we are delivering the exact uh, reason why the packet is dropped in real time without bombarding the NOS or the controller. And that makes a significant impact. Uh, you know, Surendra is going to explain the use case of it, but I'm just going to explain the technology here. And it is a very, very important technology. Almost every one of my customers is interested in this. And it has been deployed in hyperscale networks for a few years now. So uh, you know, I encourage you guys to uh, explore it. And uh, if you have any questions, definitely I'll be able to answer them. Yeah, this is the Tencent architecture. Uh, Jack is the right person to talk about, but he couldn't make it today. But like, let's say, let's look at the um, architecture. This is a very large scale by any definition I, uh, I can say. There's like basically it's made of building blocks. There's a 256 GPU block, which is eight nodes. Uh, there's uh, 32 nodes actually. There's 256 GPU block, and there's a parts, and a part is at the minimum of 16 blocks, right? Like even if you take a minimum case, that is 4K GPUs in a part, right? Uh, and then the cluster, which is 16 parts, that is 64K GPUs on the minimum side. And then if you go to the, uh, the other side, it's 256K. So 64K to 256K GPUs uh, in this cluster, basically. So and this one is running RDMA or converged Ethernet. Uh, so as you can see in the diagram, it's a rail optimized, which actually minimizes the number of uh, switches that are needed or the, cable, the cables that are needed, but it still maintains the high performance. And uh, so the, the picture here is useful because to say, okay, when you have a large scale like this, 256K, you can see how many components are involved, how many, uh, how many, things, how many uh, cables are involved, and uh, why it is important to uh, account for the failures. And that's uh, where this MOD, uh, uh, method on drop, and failure analysis, and uh, th those, are, those become very important. Okay, so the next one, I'm, I'm going to go, okay. So there are two things that are the, that we are going to be talking uh, that, that we talked about. One, uh, one is the load balancing. Right? It's like so for the, for the load balancing, it, it's important because uh, we talked about earlier because of the elephant flows. You may be getting onto a path that is not the most optimal. It's actually the link utilization is, is very very high. Uh, HPCC, which is the which is a subset of the IFA messaging, right? Is like carries the information about what is the, uh, how much latency you're seeing, or how much is the queue size, or like or what, uh, how much time it is taking, right? It's like so, so that information is very useful to say at what place, at what hop, you are, uh, for a given path, HPC, for a given path, how well the path is performing. So HPCC is uh, uh, mainly for congestion, but it's also used for the load balancing here. The, there's an agent uh, that, that monitors the path quality, and there are few components here. I'll also introduce you to this uh, component called Tickle, which is very similar to Nickel. It's the Tencent Collective Communication Library, and the, uh, and the Tickle component is running on the, uh, at the endpoint. And then the, uh, the controller and the NetQueue is more, it's doing the telemetry collection based on the IFA and HPCC. It gets all the information, and the information includes what is the traffic loss and what, what is the congestion levels? And it also has information on the MOD, how many packets are getting easy and marked. And all this information is available. And the controller is able to use this information to change the path of the routing. There's one way of the load balancing. And there's also this information goes back to the source. And there's a IFA agent that is running on each one of those nodes. So the IFA agent is monitoring how well my path is doing. HPCC provides like path quality, like so you have the path quality, how well it's doing. So it allows the endpoint uh, to say, okay, hey, here's the quality of the path, and I'm seeing multiple paths. Let me change the path for one particular queue pair. Like you can say, there's a table that maintains the QPs, and the QP has the, the flow tuples that are associated with it. And along with it, it also, the agent is, uh, is, is maintaining the information that's collected from the IFA messages. And this is very fast without involving any controller or any outside component. It's able to look at it, and then it's able to uh, use this information to improve the bandwidth. So there are various uh, test cases that were, uh, are like actual application level uh, benchmarks that, that were run. And there are uh, the bandwidth utilization by using uh, the IFA slash HPCC and also using the architecture that's shown here for load balancing. It has uh, up to 40% of the bandwidth utilization is improved. 
That's very significant because in the clusters, even few percentage points, like even 10 percentage points, I would consider significant. But I think uh, in the, the, with the telemetry-based load balancing, there's up to 40 percent that's, uh, that's seen in the, in, in the network. Yeah, uh, so um, like uh, Surendra said, right, even getting a few percentage points uh, makes a big difference. Uh, like um, uh, our BU head uh, uh, says, like, you know, the networking, the amount of spending that uh, an operator um, does on a networking is actually a small fraction when you compare uh, or when you add up uh, the NIC and GPU and all the cost. And if you are getting like uh, through this 40% improvement, then it is actually paying for the network itself, right? So that kind of significance uh, it can achieve uh, for that uh, overall uh, you know, ROI uh, point of view. And also uh, this 40% bandwidth is over DC DCQCN, right, Surendra? Yeah. So you all familiar with the DCQCN? That's the default mechanism for optimizing, uh, you know, our Rocky workloads. But uh, that is, um, uh, you know, very, very cumbersome and very uh, uh, error prone to optimize because there are apparently 15 knobs to configure and uh, achieve optimization using DCQCN. And this one, uh, you know, very simple configuration mechanism and it can deliver 40% uh, improvement. So that's a significant, uh, you know. Uh, uh, improvement. So call to action finally, uh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, we are part of the SAI TAM specification. So please, uh, uh, you know, contribute and, uh, you know, help let us know if you have any questions. We will be, um, you know, bringing forward all these innovations uh, to the SAI forum and, uh, you know, um, with your support, we will move forward. Uh, one more thing I want to add before closing. I really want to thank uh, Kate Handel. Uh, the, you know, you're all familiar with her, uh, the OCP support person. She did a fantastic job. Uh, so I really want to thank Kate uh, from this stage. Uh, thank you. The program statement you made at the beginning of the slides about the data center traffic programs. It, uh, what's the network look like? Do you reference to your HPC network architecture? or it is reference, the problem reference to different. Do, do you understand my question? Yeah, so let me uh, try. Yeah, I, I think I your question see, is. I want to see the problem statement corresponding to the network you are exercising. So uh, the problem statement is when you have a large cluster like 64K to 256 GPUs with the three-tier network that we have, with the three-tier network, if you use traditional technologies like, let's say, without the IFA, uh, with the DCQCN, what, uh, customers are finding is that the congestion and load balancing does not let you get the full bandwidth out of the fabric. Yeah, I, 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 I try to, I, I will talk to you afterwards. I, I try to see, have you tried exercising the number of spine switches? Okay. Hey, sir. Thank you for the question. Uh, you specifically mentioned path and not a flow. Pass is a logical entity. Could you please go and tell us what do you mean by pass? Is it EQDS pass? How do you define a pass? Oh, okay, so the one of the slides, uh, the, the slide before this shows uh, the endpoint is maintaining for each tuple. Like, so basically, if you, if you look at this, for each QP, every QP maintains this information. There's like flow tuple for that QP, and what is the uh, what is the quality of that? What is the quality that particular current path is saying? So it's per flow. Yeah, yeah, QP is perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you.